I was at the beach with my girlfriend who had forgotten that it was I who had brought her here and not the stranger she kept befriending. My frustrated mind couldn't take it anymore. So to calm it down, I needed a dose of caffeine in my system. There was only one cafe around here and it was about two miles distance. I got up from my beach mat and glanced at Kayla, who was busy chatting with a different stranger than before, which ruined my mood even more. It would have been better if, instead of her, I had asked my friends to come on this trip with me. At least I would have been able to enjoy their company and have some fun. She probably noticed me getting up and walking away, but she didn't bother saying anything. It's probably because of the argument she had with me about going to Bali, but what she was doing was outrageous. The least she could do was stay with me while being mad instead of making others' trips more fun. Fuming, I finally got to the cafe and damn the server was hot. But I paid no attention to her extra revealing beachwear and started going through their menu. Despite not having many options, their menu design looked quite fancy. Since the weather was quite hot, I ordered an iced vanilla latte. While I waited for my order, the server flirted with the jack dude, who I was sure was there to flex his muscles. Another server brought my order about 15 minutes later, and the moment I took the first sip, my mood spoiled even more. It tasted like shit. I didn't bother asking how they managed to ruin coffee and just left it like that. When I returned to the beach, I was surprised to find the beach empty. It was weird since there were about 50 people or more before I left and there was no possible way they all could have just left at once. Feeling anxious and with my heart beating with worry, I started searching around the beach while calling Kayla's name, but there was no response. That was when my eyes landed on a woman laughing like a maniac with a dreadful expression painted on her face while staring at the ocean. Though I was initially hesitant, I approached and asked her if she had seen anyone else and where had others gone to, but she did not respond or even glanced in my direction. For some reason, I felt a chill down my spine as her laughter grew louder, but it felt as if she was trying to scream. I walked away from her not wanting to get involved in anything crazy and continued walking further. I even thought that maybe I was on the wrong side of the beach. But now that I was walking around on the empty perimeter, it didn't seem to be the case. About half an hour later, a group of three teenagers who surprisingly were also laughing but not like that woman. They seemed to be having a conversation but were chuckling at every other word. The way they were doing it seemed like it was normal for those people. An unsettling feeling formed in my stomach when they noticed me and started looking at me with hostile expressions. I gulped, wanting to get away from them, but I still needed to know what was going on, so I approached them. When I asked them about the people on the beach, they looked at me as if I'd gone mad. But then, among their laughter, they said the beach doesn't have many visitors normally. They had to be pulling some sort of prank on me because that beach was so famous there were days when it would be swarming with people. Despite their chortles, I could still feel their gaze burning on my back as I was walking away from them. Another four miles later, I was on the edge of a woods I had never seen before, and a couple was kissing while giggling. I was about to turn away, but then my eyes widened as I saw their faces. It was Kayla and a man who looked exactly like me. I know I should have confronted them, but I panicked and ran away. As I was running away, I noticed every single person I came across was laughing with expressions that didn't match it. There had to be something wrong with the place. While thinking about that, I decided to run back to the cafe and see if I could find any help there. Once I reached the cafe, I noticed they were acting normal, and what was weirder was that I had been gone for hours but the hot server was still flirting with the jack dude, and my drink was still sitting at the table untouched. Bewildered, I looked around for someone to explain what was going on, and how in the world this place's time hadn't passed since I left. That was when the server who gave me the coffee appeared with a beaming smile and said, Oh, you're back. Good. 
I suggest you finish your drink before leaving, sir. Then she disappeared in the kitchen. Hesitantly, I sat back at my table and grabbed my drink with trembling hands. As I started sipping the coffee without caring about its spoiled taste, I noticed the man gave the server his number and left. The moment I finished my drink, I got up and the hot server finally turned toward me and said, I hope you enjoyed your drink, sir. Please come back again. I immediately rushed out of the cafe and as I walked back to the beach, I was met with some people on the way who were behaving normally. Anxious to see Kayla, I ran toward the beach and found her laughing with a group of women. Seeing her laugh made me hesitate and I halted my steps. That was when she turned toward me with a questionable expression and stopped laughing. Trust me, I had never felt so relieved to see my girlfriend in my life than I was feeling at that moment. I ran toward her and before she could say anything, I embraced her in my arms before pulling her into a deep passionate kiss. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. Upon hearing my mother's words, Hey Greg, the invitation is here, I sprang out of my cozy bed and dashed down the stairs. With a smile, my mother handed me an envelope and began sifting through the pile of mail. My heart pounding with anticipation, I hurried back to my room and eagerly tore open the envelope. I found a beautifully crafted invitation for Serena's upcoming 14th birthday celebration inside. Without a doubt, Serena was the prettiest girl in our town, and I couldn't wait to attend her party. The family of Serena was the wealthiest in the town. For the last five years, they have been organizing a grand birthday celebration for Serena, where every child of her age in the town would receive an invite. The extravagance of the event was such that nobody ever questioned why Serena was never present in person. Her family would display a painting of her at the end of the party, showcasing how beautifully she was growing up, leaving everyone in complete admiration. Although no one seemed to have asked, I was always intrigued about why Serena was never present at her birthday party. That was why this year, I was determined to meet her no matter what. The theme of this year's party was superheroes, and we were requested to dress up in our favorite character's costume. Strangely enough, a specific regulation prohibited using masks during the party. Personally, it didn't matter to me as my costume choice Aquaman did not require a mask. The long-awaited day of the party had finally arrived. Filled with excitement, I woke up early and anxiously awaited the arrival of my dear friends, Tim and Sandra. We had planned to go to the party together, and I couldn't wait to see them. As I sat and waited, time seemed to crawl by at a snail's pace until I heard the sweet sound of the doorbell. Without hesitation, I leaped up and rushed to open the door, eager to start preparing for the party. They had brought their costumes to get ready at my house. Sandra had adorned herself in a stunning Starfire costume, while Tim had transformed into Captain America. Once they had finished their preparations, my mother chauffeured us to Serena's grand and impressive residence, which looked more like a stately manor than a mere house. Each time I saw it, I was struck anew by its breathtaking beauty. Upon dropping us off and ensuring to return on time to pick us up, my mother departed. As we stepped into the vicinity, we were immediately awestruck by the intricate decorations that adorned the entrance. The effort put into each detail was remarkable and it felt like we had just walked into a grand carnival. The entire area was bustling with children from the town who had already immersed themselves in the festivities. Jesters, magicians, and games of all sorts could be seen, 
dotting the area while the aroma of tantalizing food wafted in the air, causing a stir in our stomachs and leaving us bewildered as to where to start. Despite all the excitement, my main objective was to engage in some games and then discreetly venture into the mansion to find Serena. Tim and Sandra had differing interests, with Tim preferring games and Sandra wanting to indulge in a wide range of culinary delights. Therefore, we came to a mutual decision to split up and pursue our individual preferences. We planned to reunite later at the cake cutting ceremony, which would also showcase Serena's painting. I indulged in a few magic shows and savored some delectable dishes. However, my eagerness to find the one from each year's paintings lured me into creeping around the mansion. The security detail was ever present, patrolling the premises to prevent unauthorized access to the off-limit areas. Overcoming this obstacle was daunting, but half an hour later, I managed to outsmart the security and began ascending the stairs to the second floor. Through my exploration of the house, I discovered that many rooms were inaccessible due to their locked state. I scanned the second floor and found that each room had similar looking locks. Despite my efforts to locate Serena, my search proved fruitless, and I turned to return to the party with a disappointed look on my face. Just as I was about to exit the area, I heard the sound of someone approaching. With haste, I concealed myself behind a gigantic vase and watched a man in a black suit, carrying a tray, unlocking one of the rooms and entering. Soon after, I overheard a hushed conversation between this person and another individual inside the room. I thought it was Serena, and since I didn't want to miss my only chance to see her, I walked closer to the door with silent footsteps. As I took a peek inside the room, I was met with the most horrifying scene, which sent shivers down my spine, followed by a nasty stench. The man was talking to an elderly yet scary-looking woman sitting in front of Serena's painting, and on the bed was a rotting corpse of a girl, wearing a similar outfit as the girl in the painting. Suddenly, the two people inside turned their heads in my direction, making me run to avoid getting caught. I was sure they couldn't see my face, but the scene I had just witnessed was replaying in my mind, freaking me out and making me sweat profoundly. No one came after me, but I was still scared that someone would recognize me and maybe kill me. I ran inside the crowd and started searching for Tim and Sandra, only to find them competing with each other in whack-a-mole. Where have you been, Greg? You missed how I beat Tim's ass in so many games, Sandra asked the moment her eyes landed on me. I want to go home, I said hurriedly. But your mom isn't coming for another hour. Besides, I'm not going anywhere until I eat that delicious cake they present yearly. Tim said before turning back to hit the mole again. I felt terrified as I stood with the others, watching the woman I saw in that room carrying a covered painting. We gathered around a large and beautiful cake, which Serena's mother cut before placing it with the other desserts for the children to sample. Suddenly, the curtain covering the painting was lifted, revealing a beautiful girl everyone assumed was Serena. However, I knew it wasn't her. As I gazed at the painting, I caught the woman's gaze, sending chills down my spine, causing me to look away. I can't explain why, but I sensed she knew it was me. Upon Mom's arrival, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. However, her attentive gaze quickly noticed the pallor of my skin as she asked if something had happened, or if I had a fight with someone like last year. In response, I silently shook my head and sat inside the car. 
After dropping my friends off at their houses, we headed home. That night I spent wide awake, tossing and turning, unable to shake off whatever transpired that day, shaking in fear and anxiety, thinking that the girl I was crushing on didn't exist. Nothing unusual happened until the following day when I became grievously unwell. A half decade later, I remain confined to my bed, receiving medical attention. My parents had taken me to every famous doctor, but none have been able to diagnose my condition. I am uncertain why, but I suspect it may be connected to the mysterious woman and the inexplicable occurrence I witnessed that fateful night. So I'm a 21-year-old male, and this experience happened last summer while I was on vacation at Myrtle Beach with my family. We were staying in a resort right on the beach, and we're on the 13th or 14th floor in a sort of timeshare. One night I was feeling restless and having a hard time falling asleep, and at around 3 a.m., I decided to go out on the balcony to get some air. I stepped out and was stunned as there was a full moon, and the moonlight on the water was really beautiful. The beach was completely empty as far as I could see, and I had never seen it like that before. I decided that since I wasn't able to sleep, I might as well head down, take a stroll, and listen to some music to relax. Hopefully when I returned, I'd be able to get some sleep. It was really unsafe and dumb of me, but since it was 3am and the rest of my family was asleep, I decided to just head down without letting any of them know I was going, as I thought I would just go and chill there for about 10-15 to 15 minutes and come right back up. So at the base of the timeshare we were at, there was an area with a pool, an outdoor bar, and then two boardwalks separated by about 100 feet, which both led to the beach. On the sides of the boardwalks, there were swaths of tall grass separating the ocean and the resort. When I got down to the base, the entire area was completely deserted and I started walking down the boardwalk on the right towards the beach. As I'm walking down, I suddenly see someone approaching me from the beach, which was strange because I had a pretty clear view of the same area from the balcony just before and had literally seen no one. I start to get a bit nervous as I see this figure approach, and as I get closer, I see it as a man, maybe in his late 30s, who has a backpack on and is wearing glasses with large square lenses. As he gets closer, I get a clearer look at him as the boardwalk is sort of illuminated by lights from the outdoor bar. He looks very on edge and alert, almost like he's trying to find someone who's trying to meet him in this area and his clothes are somewhat tattered. We made eye contact and I sort of nod at him and pass. At this point, I'm creeped out because, honest to God, he had a sort of Jeffrey Dahmer look. He was the glasses and he just didn't seem like he actually belonged to the timeshare. I shake it off and keep walking down the beach and put my headphones in. As I get down to the beach, I turn right and start walking parallel to the water, and I'm just taking in the scenery. I'm barefoot and decided to be nice to walk just along the shoreline, so I move closer to the water and continue walking. I'm walking for no longer than a minute before I get a really, really strange feeling that something is wrong. I take off my headphones and turn around and I see a dark figure that is trailing me just up shore. He is situated in between me and the timeshare. I immediately can tell from the figure's height, body type, and demeanor that it is the same man I passed on the boardwalk. At this point, I'm starting to panic, as every story from Let's Read is rushing to my head. At the same time, I'm trying to rationalize as it feels too surreal that I may actually be in a dangerous situation, so I remind myself it could just be a coincidence, and the man decided he also wanted to take a walk on the beach and just happened to be headed in the same direction as me. So I take some breaths and turn my head back to the ocean and continue walking in the same direction. After a couple of seconds, I turn my head back again, and seeing that now, he is much closer to me, and is not walking parallel to me, but is definitely actually walking towards me. I picked up my walking speed now and turn my head back around and see he is matching my faster pace and is still walking towards me and the water. Still, for some reason, I think, okay, maybe he also wants to walk by the water. There's no way I'm actually being followed by a creepy man on a deserted beach. 
So at this point, to truly test it, I do a 180 and completely change directions. And as I turn my head, I see him completely change directions with me and continue closing in distance. And he's power walking now. It suddenly hits me that I'm in a really bad situation. And I take off in a run along the water and he starts running as well. He stays up shore of me so that if I try to run up towards the boardwalk, he will intercept me. I'm freaking out now and just keep running with no plan, but figured that since I'm 20 and sort of fit, I should probably be able to keep running along the water and outrun him, and then find some other exit off the beach and either call my family or head back to the timeshare on the road. So I keep running, but he's keeping up with me, and this goes on for what feels like 10 to 15 minutes. The scariest part of all of this, which I wouldn't have thought of, is it is completely dead silent. All I hear is my breath and feet on the sand, and when I turn, I only see his shadowy figure up shore keeping pace with me. Suddenly up ahead, in the sand, I see a small blue light and what looks like four people on the beach with a blanket. They are a bit up shore. I turn and look at the figure and bet even though they are up shore, I can beat them to these people, so... I start sprinting towards them with the hopes of quickly telling them what's going on so we all can confront him. I really use up my energy sprinting towards them and as I approach, my heart drops. What I see is four guys on a blanket, with three or four handles of hard liquor surrounding them. Three of the handles are empty and the fourth is about half empty. Three of the guys are just completely passed out in the blankets and the last is half sat up, obviously beyond drunk with a sort of party hat on that has blue lights on it and he's talking to himself. His eyes are half closed and he doesn't even register me approaching him, even though now I'm no more than five feet away. I turn and see the figure is slowed down and is observing me, and then I see he makes sense of the group's state and suddenly starts sprinting at me. As he gets closer, the half-passed-out guy's blue light illuminates him, and I can clearly see it's the same guy as before. I make eye contact with him and I can see his wide eyed and looks almost manic and is barreling at me full sprint. At this point I decided to do something decisive. It seemed like I had underestimated his fitness and since I had just sprinted towards this group and exhausted myself, I was afraid that he might be able to catch up to me if we just continued running along the beach indefinitely and then who knows what. So instead of turning around and running, I suddenly sprint towards him and to the right, which I don't think he was expecting at all. I catch him off balance and run past him, and I literally am full sprinting back to the timeshare without even looking back. Literally all the hairs on my neck were standing, and it felt like a dream where you're barely evading someone, but he's right about to catch you. The adrenaline was crazy, and I keep running and start to see the timeshare. I finally turn around to see how close he is and I see him in the distance maybe 400 to 500 feet away. He's lost a lot of distance on me. I don't waste any time and sprint up the boardwalk and towards the base of the timeshare. I jam the elevator buttons and leap in and start mashing the closed door button as I'm gasping for air. The door closes and I hit the button for my floor and when the elevator reaches, I literally sprint back to my room, open the door, enter and then slam the door and double lock it. I'm breathing heavy and I drop to the floor and just sit there for a minute, not believing what just happened. I crouch and crawl over to my room as I was literally afraid he might be able to see through the window on our balcony and I enter my room. Let's just say I definitely wasn't able to sleep after that. This incident happened to me about two years ago when I was celebrating my birthday party with my colleagues at Burger King. I was shocked to see that and was upset also because that ruined my birthday celebration and also sent all of us to the hospital. At that time, I was working in a software development company. I was a programmer and was working to my fullest to improve my skills and also to impress my boss. I always had this dream to work in a software development company in the future, and I followed my dream and worked hard to reach here. Finally, I got what I wanted. I was very happy with my work, and also, I was getting a good enough income, so I had no complaints at all from my life. Everything was going really well. 
I was living away from my parents in my hometown which was several miles away from my company. I rented an apartment and lived with one of my colleagues, or you can say my best friend. She was my best friend and the one with whom I could share anything, and she always suggested the best for me. We both were true to each other and never hid any secrets between us, whether it was related to personal or professional life. We worked for the same department, and I met her after joining this job. The apartment we were living in was actually hers. I was just living in a shared house as she felt lonely there. We both were completely happy and satisfied with our current life. Everything was going well, until my birthday. The day was the 14th of December 2009, and this year, I was turning 22. My friend told everyone in the office about my birthday. At first, they all greeted me and wished me a birthday, but soon, they all started to demand a party, and since I was the birthday girl, I had no option but to give them a treat for my birthday. It was all thanks to my sweet but naughty friend. I agreed to throw a party after office hours. I wasn't planning to go somewhere far away, so I decided to take all of them to Burger King, which was just near our office, and treat them to a burger party. I wasn't sure about my plan, so I discussed my idea with my friend, and she agreed with me completely. Before I could say anything, she announced this to everyone in a loud tone, and everyone there started to dance. They all were happy and excited about the party. We worked till our office hours, and then around 6 p.m., we all left the office and went outside. At first, we decided to book cabs for all of us, but we were more than 20 in number, so we thought of walking as it was not too far from our office. I was walking ahead of my friend and everyone else was following our lead. We looked like a gang, but a decent one. Everyone stared at us while we were walking to Burger King, as if we were the point of attraction. I was feeling a little embarrassed, but I ignored everything and walked forward while keeping my head down. After walking continuously for five to seven minutes, we reached our destination. We entered the store, and each of us grabbed a seat. Since it was my birthday, I went to the counter and asked the counter boy to receive order details from each one of us one by one. That was the best option, as I didn't know whether they liked my choice or not. The counter boy did exactly what I asked him to do. And after that, he asked us to wait for half an hour since our order quantity was too much, so we had to wait a little longer than usual. We all waited for our orders, and finally, after 20 minutes, our order was prepared and we all got our burgers. Before eating, all of them stood from their chairs gathered around me and wished me again but in a loud voice with a lots of claps. I was feeling embarrassed there, but inside I was really happy. This was the best birthday experience of my life after coming away from my parents and my family. I thanked all of them and asked them to enjoy the party. They all went back to their seats and started eating their burgers. We all would have just grabbed one or two bites when we heard a loud commotion outside the store. We all looked outside, and suddenly, lots of dogs came running inside the store. We all were shocked and stood up on our chairs. The dogs were even greater in number than us. They saw a crowd inside the store and started barking at us. Soon, the dogs smelled our burgers and snatched almost all of them. We all were there and witnessed the dogs enjoying our meals. We all were afraid to speak a word since there were more than 20 dogs in that Burger King. It was my birthday and my party for my colleagues, but instead of them, the dogs were enjoying my treat. We remained in fear of those dogs for the next 15 to 20 minutes until the counter boy called the Animal Control Bureau to come and catch those dogs. They arrived in the next 15 minutes and caught all the dogs and took them along. After everything was cleared, we looked at each other's faces and laughed out loud. We were laughing at our condition, and after thinking that it was not our party but the dogs were the ones who enjoyed the party the most, they ruined our party. Even after that, I asked the counter boy to repeat our order, but they all refused to do so since I had already wasted too much money. Also, after the dogs came in, a foul smell covered the whole store, and it was difficult for us to stay there any longer. We all decided to call it off for the day and return back home. They all wished me again for my birthday and went back to their roots, and I also returned to my apartment with my friend. We all were in a bad mood since all our planning was in vain but there was nothing we could have done now, so we accepted the fact and went to sleep.